Everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101. I, yes, I'm still in the backyard. Sorry, uh, it's coming. <laughs> this is uh, only my third day full time, Prepared Mind 101, still ironing some stuff out. Uh, but hey, the weather's getting better, so those trips to the woods, they're coming soon. I wanted to revisit a knife that I reviewed pr uh, previously that I now own. And it's got some changes to it that the earlier version did not have and I wanted to show them to you and show you some mods that I've done to the sheath. So what we're talking about here is the Topps Tahoma Field Knife. This is the Andy Tran design knife, uh, new for 2014. Now, if you watch the Topps video from SHOT Show, I asked Leo from Topps if, they, if you could order a Tahoma Field Knife without this top edge sharpened and he said yes so I hereby present you with the evidence of that what I have here is a false upper edge Tahoma field knife alright lighten up with the wind good god nature's always out to get me when I'm trying to do these videos so you know what, I'm going to go under the tent shelter, or the tarp shelter, and you know maybe this wind will let up a little bit, so let's move it. Okay, so as I was saying, I wanted to uh, point out to you the differences in this Tahoma field knife from the one that I reviewed earlier, uh, because I, this is going to be getting field tested throughout the summer by me. I'm going to be alternating between uh, Becky 2, uh, my BK9, which sorry if I'm going in the woods I gotta have my BK9 and the Tahoma field knife so this I'm gonna be using this a lot as my primary large fixed blade and I want to give you some more thoughts on this since I've had this one this one's actually mine now uh, the other one was a, an early production loaner uh, so we could get some reviews done but mine has the false edge which so I actually like this one I understand why Andy designed it that way I don't want or need that I don't I'm not a one tool option guy I'm a how many knives can I get away with carrying guy so I don't need that top edge it, it, I just feel better with this being a false edge and I actually like this a lot better some other things that I've done to this one I'm not also a big micarta guy I know I'm, just, I'm when it comes to my tools, when I'm done using them, I, I spend a lot of time cleaning them up, putting them away nice and neat and clean. Uh, if you watch the K-Bar video I did from SHOT Show, Ethan Becker hit me with a zinger. He's like, obviously you haven't been using it. It's like, eh, it's it's Jessica. I'm, I clean this thing up every time I, I, I put it away. So, of course, it's nice and clean and polished. But I don't like how my Carta gets really gunky after a lot of heavy use. And I don't necessarily care for the feel of it, so I wanted to try some different things. And I actually wrapped this handle. And this particular wrap is the rescue tape that I'm experimenting with now. And I think this makes this handle feel absolutely fantastic in the hand. Much more so than, to me at least, than it did before. So we're going to be testing that out, seeing how it holds up. And plus it keeps the micarta underneath of it from getting really gunky and nasty. I would prefer a darker micarta if it was my choice. I would like to see this in the, the green micarta that Topps uses on a lot of its knives. I think that would look really great. Or even the black. But either way, it still looks cool. This one was actually a gift to me from Andy Tran. So this one is never getting given away or anything. I, I really treasure this knife as an awesome gift from a, from a good friend. So, and I'm definitely going to put this thing through its paces and actually seeing what it can do. And let me speak to something really quick. Let's go over this once again because it keeps coming up. Look, people, this thing is not going to snap. Ever since Buck just crapped on the memory of Ron Hood by putting out that poorly heat treated Buck Hoodlum that snaps every time anyone tries to baton through a log. Everyone looks at these Topps knives and says, oh, it's going to snap, uh, it's going to fail. No, it isn't. Topps has been putting notches in knives forever. Topps, they're masters at heat treat. I, 
I honestly have not, I'm not saying it's never happened, I'm saying I've never heard of a Topps knife snapping. I just haven't. And especially, like these, not, uh, the, the notches that Topps puts on some of their models, uh, usually the Ron Hood models, like the Topps Anaconda. Uh, Bushcraft on Fire, his channel, he uses a Topps Anaconda Tonto Point. I guarantee you, he's pounded freaking hundreds of logs with that thing. Doesn't fail. This is this is a thick piece of 1090, of premium 1095, uh, with perfect heat treat. Don't worry about this thing snapping. It's not gonna snap. I just it's just not gonna do it. So if you if you snap one, let me see it. Well, and it, it, Tops will at least replace it for you, but it's just not going to happen. There's just there's too many Tops knives out there that already that have had this for years, and no one has ever had a problem with it. So stop worrying about it. It's it wasn't it wasn't because of the notch. Well, the notch contributed to it, but when the heat treat wasn't right or whatever the heck they did to that thing that knife to screw it up, that's what the cause was, not not the notch itself. Now the some thoughts I've had since playing with this. This definitely feels like a tool. It feels like a woods tool. It feels like a, a, a survival tool. This doesn't feel like a fighting knife. Like the Becker BK9, that can actually serve both roles. Survival knife or combat knife. Because primarily it is a combat knife. It is called the Becker BK9 Combat Bowie. Or Bowie, if you want to be a Bowie pronunciation uh critic. I'm sorry. When they changed the spelling to B-O-O-W-E-E, -E, I'll call it Bowie. But right now, it's it's spelled like it should be Bowie. So I'm going to say Bowie because Bowie, for one, doesn't sound stupid. Uh, and I just like it better. So someone's going to say it. So I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not going to call it Bowie. I'm not going to do it. Bowie. Get over it. So, the BK-9 Combat Bowie can serve both purposes. It can serve as a combat knife, or it can serve as a survival knife, and it works excellent at both functions. Uh, I got a brand new one, uh, Becky 2, as a gift from somebody, and I tell you what, K-Bar's gotten a lot better at putting factory edges on those knives. So, I'm going on, I'm talking about Becker again, aren't I? Dang it, I'm supposed to be talking about tops. Ugh. Tahoma Field Knife. Uh, so yeah, that's what it, that's the changes to this knife as opposed to the one that I uh, reviewed before. Uh, false edge. Now you know for sure you can get this with a false edge. I mean, look at this. I can put this thing directly on my eyeball and not cut it. So you know that this is a false edge. Um, I'm not going to do it with this one because uh, Bryce sharpened it and I would have to wear an eye patch. And I don't think I could pull off the the snake Pliskin look. Uh, quite as good as he did. So that's this. Now I did make some modifications to the sheath as well because uh, I had some uh, criticism about the sheath when I tested it before. So let me move the camera around and I'll show you what I did to the sheath. Okay, let's take a look here at the things that I've done to this particular sheath. Move this down a little bit. Okay, the first things that I did, I didn't like the Velcro on the sheet that it came with. So I took the straps off my Ontario SP50 and and sewed them onto this sheath and added some glue, made sure they're nice and tight uh, because they fit perfect. Now I can tell you almost for certain that the sheath manufacturer that Topps uses is the same sheath manufacturer that Ontario uses because these sheaths are almost identical. The only difference was the straps. The Topps knife had the Velcro straps and the SP50 had these uh, much better straps with these kind of swivels on them and snaps, which I prefer. So Topps, if you have that uh, option, I would highly suggest getting this knife with these straps. I just think they're enormous improvement. So you've got the two straps. And then the other thing that I added is I added this thick shock cord loop. So what's the point? Per, <laughs> what's the purpose of that? You ask, since I've already got two straps. Well, the purpose is if, if I'm doing a lot of work, 
to where I'm constantly taking my blade in and out. I don't want to sit there and go, okay, let's snap this back. What I can do is I can just take this shock cord loop and loop it over, and this thing ain't going anywhere. So I wouldn't want to have this as my only retention option, but it's there, so like I said, if I'm, if I'm taking the knife in and out a lot doing work, and I don't want to just keep dealing with that, I can just use the shock cord loop. Uh, I've done that on other knives. It, ac it actually works rather well. The other thing that I did was I added this uh, leg strap to it. And it's not uh, directly attached to the sheath. It's just, uh, I just loop it through the molly loop. And then, it, I just, I, I used to think it looked like overly ridiculous, kind of tactical. But it actually, when you're running around through the woods and stuff like that, it actually feels a lot better to have that knife securely attached to your hip. So, and I can take that off whenever I want. It's just, like I said, I just ran it through the model loop. So, the other things that I did is for the pouch itself, I don't normally sharpen with this, but if I was in the field and I had to, I could touch it up with this. It's just a Lansky diamond rod. And then I always want to have a combustion, a surefire combustion device on me. So for that regard, I've got the Exotac Poly Striker XL, and I don't have to worry about using the spine of the knife or anything like that because it's got the striker built into the handle. And this is one of my all-time favorite uh, fire steels or ferro rods, to be more specific. And it's a perfect fit for a pouch on this particular knife. So other than that, those are all the modifications that I have made to this particular setup. I like it a lot. Okay, here we go with the wind again. Let's move this back. So, we're not going to do anything else with this today until I actually do the, uh, the actual field tests. I just wanted to show you the differences uh, as opposed to the earlier video that I did, uh, this false edge, the wrap that I'm using, the modifications I did to the uh, sheath, and you know what I think of it now. And I'm actually liking this. I liked it before. I really like it now. I know it's a little bit pricey. It's about 175 bucks on Topps' website. But again, like I said before, this is an American-made knife from a company that's all veteran-owned. It's just total quality. Uh, this isn't a cheap Chinese-made knife. This is, this is something that you save up for, and once you have this, you've got something that you know that you can trust your life to. I wanted to give you some more of the statistics since I'm trying to get better with that as far as you know, how long is the blade, how much does it weigh. I went on the Topps website and looked it up and they didn't have any of that. If they did, it was on some totally other page. But when I went to where the Tahoma Field Knife was, it was like, Tahoma Field Knife, $175. And then it went into like Andy Tran's life story. So if you go on the Topps website, you can find out how old Andy was when he lost his virginity, what his first car was, what his favorite color is, uh, but details about the knife uh, are nowhere to be found. So I'm sure they're there somewhere, but I couldn't find them. It was, like I said, it was just name of the knife, price, uh, how Andy Tran, what, what conditioner he likes on his hair. So can tell you this it takes an excellent edge this is a Bryce sharpened blade so it is extremely deadly sharp I just played around with it just did some quick curls on a piece of wood I mean it's I, I, I'm warming to the whole choil thing I'm, I've never really been into choils before but like I did with you know recently I'm starting to get more into axes and hawks and things that I didn't used to do, I'm trying to change a little bit. I'm trying to open my horizons, try different foods, so to speak, and get used to things that I'm just not used to doing. And when you're doing some kind of, you know, close-up work, I, I, I'm definitely kind of liking the choil on this knife. It just makes sense. I don't think this would feel right on a Becker because you know, the Becker handles are just, you, there's no room for it, it wouldn't be a Becker handle if it had a choil. But on this knife, uh, it, it works. It makes a lot of sense. 
and I really like it. Andy did an excellent job in, desi in designing this knife. So, like I said, this is going to be one that gets a thorough work through. This is something that I'm going to be using in videos that aren't about this knife. Uh, it's going to be one of my two main big blades that I use throughout the spring and the summer as I go out and do all these things that I've got planned. So, still liking it. This is still one of Prepared Mind 101's favorite blades. So that's all I got to say about that. Just wanted to give you that update. Uh, don't want to ramble anymore. I'm Chris from Prepared Mind 101. Thanks for watching. I am full time now, so I'm completely dependent on you helping me out by sharing my videos, uh, telling people about the channel, views. Every once in a while, if you can, you know, sit through a 30 second or even three minute ad. I know those three minute ads are freaking killer. I, I want to skip them myself. <laughs> I'm watching, reviewing my videos. I'm like, oh my god. I know these ads are, are good for me, but it, it's brutal sometimes. I, I cross my fingers for movie trailers because I can actually sit through a movie trailer. Uh, but something else, three minutes, like, oh my god. But it does help me, uh, so I do appreciate anybody that actually sits through that. Because so I tell you what, it's a little scary when YouTube's your only uh, source of income outside of your wife, who makes considerably more than I ever did, but she's a teacher. So that's that. I tend to ramble, don't I? But that's me. I'm, I'm not all about editing stuff. Tahoma Field Knife. Pick yours up today at uh, topsknives.com. I would say uh, inner, uh, Andy's website is www.inner-bark.com, and he has a store on there too. I looked at it today. He didn't have any of these listed. He might be out of them, but he can always get them for you. So like I've said in other recent videos that uh, I may not have posted yet, I try to give some options for people that want to support the little guy uh, and help them out. Uh, the smaller stores, the smaller vendors. If you don't want to support someone like Amazon or something like that, uh, you can always buy it from the guy that actually designed it. is a big help to him. So really, really appreciate it. And sub his channel too, because his uh, channel is excellent. So thanks, guys. Chris from Prepare My 101. Be back later.